Meanwhile, the story continues with a confrontation between two monsters, in which the guy with blue hair defeated a huge bull that got in his way. He was even thrown up several dozen meters. So now it was time for the next contestant. He looked at Torin and ordered him to stop where he was. But a second later, there was maximum surprise on his face because he didn't even know what to do or how to react to it. The guy ran so fast that it was really quite problematic to notice him. Pedestrians diverged on the sides because the guy could have run someone off the road holding his phone. He was as frightened as possible, driven by fear and his instinct for self-preservation. He tried to warn all the people around him to be more careful, because it is really not safe to be here. He never parted with his phone and held it in his hands all the time, after which it began to glow with a very strong blue light again, which attracted the attention of another very beautiful girl, who was surprised by this energy. At this point, the movers were taking the boxes into the house and also didn't understand how he got so much energy. Her eyes lit up. I can sense the energy from the net sphere. It must be. They both stared at this cell phone, which also stood out from them. The loader also understood that this could not be a mistake of any kind. It was really soul ARK. They both began to glow, and it seemed that their transformation had begun as well, as white blood began to flow through their veins, shining all around them. The guy held his phone and closed his eyes. He did not understand what was happening again and what was wrong with his eyes, because the bright flashes blinded absolutely everything and everyone around him. With the soul arc, they can become a celestial. The guy was frightened and very surprised by this, because he had just survived two monsters fighting over his phone, and now two more monsters were standing in front of him, who also kept talking to him and making a point of what he was holding in his hands. But unlike the previous enemies, they themselves wanted to get out of here as soon as possible. The guy asked them to calm down and asked if they were here about the phone. Then why don't they make a deal in that case? He wouldn't ask for much in return. But they were wary and didn't want to listen to him at all, charging their weapons and ordering the guy to raise his hands, or he would be destroyed. A second later, they started firing guns at him, which was already obvious. Even he was just laughing, because what's wrong with trying to make a few dollars in this situation? Everything around him was falling apart. Blasts from the blaster melted the bus stop completely. But the guy didn't care at all, he was still having fun. When he saw the blaster beside him, he laughed and asked, Is that mommy beside him? But the monster was unstoppable. His hand became very hot and began to glow. His partner also came over to help him. He really didn't want to be forced to repeat himself. So he ordered the guy to put his hands up one more time. If not, he would get a big dose of nasty burn that he would never forget. The guy with the blue hair was already behind them and started smiling, asking if that was it. Since his voice sounded much more intimidating, he hugged his abusers and put his arms around their shoulders, which they clearly were not expecting. With a laugh, he let them know that, unfortunately, he was now the next customer, so they would have to wait on the line. What in tarnation? Errand of Mount Liang? What in the devil? They wanted to figure out what was going on here and who this guy was, but he made it clear to them that it was none of their business who he was. But the monster agreed, saying that he would just stick his cap in his knee. But the guy didn't care. He was having a lot of fun. He really wanted to see how he would try it, because he had already captured one of the monsters on a chokehold. His accomplice didn't like it very much, so he decided to show him a few lessons as well by loading his weapon. But the guy didn't care. He was as happy as possible to talk to them, despite the fact that a few seconds later, half of the skyscraper was completely destroyed. And all this in the heart of the city. The blue-haired guy was surprised by this blow, because this hole could have been in him if he hadn't bounced back in time. The monster charged his fist and reminded him that he had ordered the guy to leave. But he had no emotion other than laughter. The monster looked very small and helpless, unlike his partner. And while he was thinking about how to attack, the blue-haired guy pounced on them and kept trying to break them. They didn't like it, of course. And they were already wondering why they let him behave this way, so they needed to teach him a lesson immediately. At this point, 
While the monsters were fighting again, Torin ran away again. Because a real salesman never misses an opportunity. Seeing this, the guy with the blue hair ordered him back, which really surprised the monsters, because how does he manage to still look for his partners now? But something happened that no one was prepared for. He opened his jacket and tore himself apart, telling them to try to cram it in. It was very aggressive because he really needed to prove his superiority to them. Breaking the robot, he asked them once again, who do they think they are? After that, he calmed down a bit and said that they should listen. Let them try to attack again if they live to dawn. The monsters lay down and promised the guy that he would pay for everything as he raised his weapon. But something didn't go according to plan, because at that moment there was a huge bunch of people watching and filming him. He wiped a little dirt off the body and said it would be better to clean it all up. Then he took out his phone and told the audience to say cheese, also activating his device, which began to dazzle everyone around him. And it looks like the same result will happen now, when the same device was used by the bull. Meanwhile, the story begins with a guy running, who knowing that being in this place is not particularly safe, the guy decided to run away right away, so that he would not run into any more monsters along the way. But this could not be avoided. They all stopped to ask if this is really Soul Ark? They wanted to take it for themselves, but at that moment, the guy with the blue hair also ran after the guy, who had already shown absolutely everyone how good he was. So he had no trouble destroying these monsters with his machine gun. He smiled and pulled out his memory wiping device, asking everyone to look in that direction and smile, whereupon a huge crowd of people formed around him, looking with wonder and incomprehension at the bright glare of the device. This was followed by the sound of explosions that could be heard at every point in the city. Moreover, most of it fell on the building of the nearest skyscraper. The result was a huge cloud of smoke and a black hole right in the center of the building that looked like the site of a shell landing. If you take a closer look at it, it's not hard to see that it's actually behind this incomprehensible round thing you can safely see what's on the other side of the building. It looks like it pierced through it. Immediately thereafter, the guy with the red sneakers took a step, trying to figure out what was going on here. It was the same sneaker buyer who also appeared rather unexpectedly and clarified that it looked like the guys were having a lot of fun without him. Surprisingly, he looked calm enough. The other part of the metropolis continued to function quietly. Cars drove, buildings were intact, and the sky was intensely blue. At that moment, Torin was trying to blend in with the crowd at Gangnam Station, so no one would notice him. It wasn't hard to see that he was really worried and anxious. Suddenly, another black hooded monster appeared in front of him, glowing and trembling. Turns out it was a huge polar bear with an interesting bow on its head that was screaming and ordering the guy to give him the soul ARK. He immediately picked the guy up and proceeded to threaten him, saying that maybe it has been too long since I have eaten this delicacy. But he couldn't even be frightened properly anymore, because what had happened to him in the last 30 minutes had taken almost all of his emotions away. The bear began to yell at him sharply, saying that he would only need one bite, which, let's face it, also scared the guy. Suddenly, arrows started flying at the bear, fired by the blue-haired guy. He was not very happy to see the guy again since this is getting tedious every time to fight a bunch of monsters. He also smiled and said the guy owed him a little chat now, don't he think? The guy at this point was trying to wriggle out of the bear that was hanging on him and was very aggressive. He was angry at him, saying that he was a maniac and he owed him absolutely nothing. He loaded his gun and asked the guy to repeat what he had said. But he was affirmative and even though he was frightened, he repeated that he owed him absolutely nothing. At this point, the guy with the blue hair was very angry, not in a bad way at all. That's why he activated his machine gun and started shooting in the guy's direction, once again asking did he really just call him a maniac? Really, he was furious, and the guy started running away, saying that this is way out of my league. He absolutely couldn't understand why the police were idle. Couldn't they serve and protect? He was hanging onto his head when suddenly he saw the car of the police. He was very excited because finally he would be saved. That's why he ran up to them and asked them very strongly for help. He jumped on their car, which they absolutely could not have expected, continuing to shout that he really needed help. The driver of the car at this point was very surprised and frightened, 
because he didn't know what it was or who the guy was. But he climbed up on their windshield and started waving his hands and banging on it. Immediately, a dialogue formed between them. One of them asking, can he take care of this guy for him? To which the latter replied, very simply, should he arrest him? Butterin was very excited and scared. He begged them to do something, pointing at the guy who was next to him, because he was trying to kill him. The cops were shocked, and one of them got out of his car and started yelling at the guy to get away from it, because it was defacing city property. The guy agreed, and added that he was in danger and needed help. At this point, the guy with the blue hair was really very aggressive and smiling his eyes glowing red. It was obvious that he couldn't take a joke right now. Torin was trying to convince them that he would literally shoot up the city, especially since it was already in ruins because of him. Moreover, he added that this monster had been chasing him the whole time. Well, it's impossible. That is why he asked to step away from the car immediately. At that moment, a shot rang out, which threw the rear wheels of the car several meters upward, which scared everyone around him very much. And then a second later, thanks to the tremendous wave power, the car was completely flipped over, and the guy flew back a few meters, after which he hit his head and twisted several times. The guy with the blue hair had absolutely no sense of humor, but he still kept his sense of humor. He stood beside the car and started laughing, asking what that overkill. Well, the cops at this point started grabbing their heads just like the guy who got hurt, his adversary came up to him and sat down, saying that all he wanted was just a little cooperation on his part, though he asked the guy now to be a lamb and hand over the soul arc, which made him very angry. But then the guy with the blue hair was very unlucky, as a policeman's gun was pointed at his head, ordering him to put down his weapon and put his hands up. When he saw this picture, he was very surprised, asking if the police officers were really still alive. After all, this is very good. At this point, the guy started screaming really hard, addressing the police officers and telling them that this guy was a terrorist and he was very dangerous. He really understood that this was his last chance. So he ordered the police to arrest him immediately and send him straight to jail. He also began shouting and smiling, asking how he felt now after such a thing. But he was only very surprised at being threatened by ordinary people and simply pressed his device, which made a blue flash that blinded everyone around him. This made Torin begin to worry about his eyes. Suddenly, the cops didn't understand what was going on. They seemed to have amnesia and lost their memory. After that, Torin became very aggressive. Damn it, you started me. Anyways, what are you waiting for, officers? But they just started grabbing their heads and didn't understand why they had guns in their hands. And then they turned to the car and saw that it was blown up and completely overturned, which immediately made one of them cry, because he really had a lot of memories with it. At this point, his partner turned out to be a real rat, because he started to hit on him because he drove very badly, and he warned him about the possible outcome. So he wished him luck in explaining the situation, and added that a good option for him would be to write a letter of resignation. Torin was also as annoyed as possible and pounced on the policemen, asking what they were doing, as there was a real terrorist standing in front of them. But he didn't understand what he meant and asked where he was. Then the guy with blue hair ran up to them and said he was right there and activated his device again, which blinds and clears the memory. He was very amused, so he praised the guy for a great effort as he grabbed his eyes, which were hurting very badly from the bright light. When everyone had already moved on a little bit, the policeman proceeded to lash out at his partner, saying that he was in a very unpleasant situation while he was still frustrated about the car. Torin was beginning to panic because his memory wasn't wiped. He couldn't figure out what was wrong with these guys, but the guy with the blue hair never tired of laughing. He said he used Memorasser against them, which doesn't work on him alone. He was shocked and tried to understand what he meant by that. Then he showed him again the device, which had been used several times before, and again began to glow with a bright blue flash. The guy got very angry and cried, because right now he was being made blind again. 